Hey folks, this is Dog by Harris from Ruckus in the Records. I'm here to tell you about a contest we are doing live via the Ruckus in the Records YouTube channel on Saturday, March 20th, called Ruckus in the 80s. Ruckus in the 80s is a virtual show much like Battle of the Bands. Bands or solo artists will enter two of the best 80s cover songs they can come up with for a chance to win a cash prize and 100 drink koozies with their logos printed on them. Now the cash prize is determined is each act that enters will be required to pay a $5 entry fee. We at Ruckus will match that to double that money. As of now, the pot is up to $200 and growing daily. The winner will be decided by the votes of the viewers via an online voters poll. If you or someone you know is interested in entering or sponsorship opportunities, Hit up any of the Ruckus and the Records social media pages or send an email to Ruckus and the Records, all lowercase letters, at yahoo.com for more details. We hope to see you guys in the chat room on March 20th at the Ruckus and the Records YouTube page. Alrighty, folks. Welcome everybody to a show that I am calling Stone Dog Radio. Um, little impromptu thing. Me and Pappy Fat from Stone Evergreen Travelers decided to do. Um, hell yeah, you guys just listened to. What did I fucking pick first? Oh, Detonator Rock and Rollins, who we who we kicked the show off with. So Pappy's getting getting proper, and the name of his band is not Stone Evergreen Travelers. To be clever. It's not a witty it's, name. It's yeah, a we always style. say we always say it's not just the name. <laughs> it's usually when we're apologizing because we fucked something up or forgot about it. <laughs> so what's been up, brother? Oh, you know, fucking the COVID thing. Just been uh going to work and fucking playing the guitar, man. That's about <laughs> yeah. it. That's the lifestyle. Yeah, it's about the same here, man. Um, yeah. Doing the online stuff too, because um, we're actually this weekend. Well, as we're talking, you know, we're doing the the Moon Runners Fest tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. This won't air before that because I don't want to steal their thunder. But um, but it'll air the day after, so you can talk a little bit about where'd you guys record? I haven't even seen it yet, so I'll I'll be watching tomorrow though. Oh yeah, we um Danny Cash, um, you know my buddy Danny Cash from Oh yeah, Cash. um he. He has uh, at his house, they've converted his garage, his detachable garage into their fucking, um, their studio where they practice, dude. And of course, you know, in, in Danny Cash style, he fucking went big and they built a stage in there. They got lighting, a nice PA, fucking 1970s Corvette. Um, and uh, his brother, Jason Lilly, um, he's just a really good fucking sound guy, dude. And he had all the Pro Tools um and they got the and then um shane lily um jason's son came and did the video and uh we just went there and um you know they uh set us up fucking recorded us jason uh took the the pro the pro tools and the video and fucking it was funny i had to do a clap before each one Mm. those were fucking uh legendary i told i thought i wanted to kind of keep some of that debacle in there because dude you know, when you're high, I'm not good with words, you know, words <laughs> and, and me are really good friends. So I didn't do a lot of talking. Um, so it's just, you know, we did a little, you know, intro and then an outro, but everything else, it was just a, we, we, we did pretty much one take on every song. It's the original, the first take, but we did it individually and then we blended it together. And it turned out fucking really good, dude, man. They fucking busted ass for us and it was appreciative to the Lilies letting us come invade their house and you know, and fucking uh, set up and do shop. We'll probably do more with them just because nice. it's, it's set up and they just do it so well. So, right on. Um, have you been watching the Moon Runners tonight at all? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I was. Uh, we just got done watching um, uh, Brooke. Yeah. And then we watched uh, Liz and the McGovern brothers. And That's why I was kind of late. Is because I was watching Brooke. Yeah, we was and uh, we came on right around uh, Last False Hope. Um, you know, we went out and played in the snow and fucking, you know, walked around and did some of that shit. But then, yeah, man, she, TJ is watching it right now as we're we're talking. Um, yeah, dude, Brooks' set was really good. 
even dropping all this shit and stuff, man. Dude, it was a legendary fucking set, dude. Yeah, it was really good. I just had Joey on, man. It was a good interview. Yeah, yeah, all those right. guys are fun, man. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah those guys. It was fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love those guys to death, man. They're great band, man. Yeah, a lot of fucking good bands, man. All of them, you know. Yeah, and I like but how it's it filmed. The last fucking thirteen years, dude, has been. A, a musical other than this last fucking year which could just Suck. you know be impeached on its own self uh-huh. uh, but uh yeah dude i mean it's just like the last 13 years it's just really dude it's been a fucking goddamn blast musically yeah man it's been good i mean actually me and jody on our episode back from uh from or on our season two opener we're gonna do a special where we kind of touch base on that and kind of talk about like the albums that we thought were like most influential to the original dog water which would be like you know a lot of calamity cubes high lonesome 357 string band i'm not sure i haven't really like sat down and broke it down we're gonna do our top 10 albums but i but i uh i haven't really sat down and thought about it i'm just right now thinking about all the great albums (laughs) that came out around that time you know yeah. Oh, and yeah. As we were trying to figure out, you know, this this whole fucking Zoom thing, we were watching the peculiar pretzelman. Yeah, that's those two a little bit of them. Yeah, dude, it was fucking rad, dude. It was uh, they were fucking killing it. It was awesome. Yeah, and then oh, that dude is fucking original. Jake and Mikey are coming up here in a little bit, so. Yeah. But yeah, for those of you folks, by the time this airs, you'll be able to watch this all on YouTube. So. Go check it out at the Moon Runners Music Festival uh, YouTube page. It's gonna be good. Yeah, but then yeah, you rewatch them and shit. It's all rad. Yeah, we watched uh, Lawrence too. Yeah, I watched a few yesterday too, and then I'll watch a few tomorrow. But yeah, man. Oh shit. So for those of you guys that don't know, and most of you probably don't, uh, well, Pappy Fifth is involved in the weed industry, the legal weed industry, which. Yeah. We all kind of thought this would never fucking happen, but I thought I'd give you a chance to kind of do a and a for what goes into that. Like, like I'll start up. One thing I'm wondering is how often does, like, the, the state of Washington inspect you guys? Um, I've been there since July, and uh, I think once they've come by. What do they check when they come in? Uh, they just make sure, you know, there's certain, certain, I mean, dude, it's, um, legit how they run this industry. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, my boss does it very well. He's a very good businessman. He's very on top of things. Um, because I mean, this is a, a treat for all of us, you know, um, to be able to have this. I mean, it's been a long, long time coming. Um, and it's pretty precious, but it's, I think it's protected, dude. It's, it's looking good as far as the industry, even getting federally, um, legalized, which the one kind of con that a lot of us talk about is, you know, the typical government coming in and taking it over, you know, mm. um, once that's, that's the one, one kind of one downsize of it being federally legalized is, you know, they could truly have the opportunity to stick their fucking you know, dumb asses into it and, you know, potentially just ruin this really great opportunity for not only for states to take advantage of it to uh, take care of themselves, you know, Washington kind of does it stupidly, but, um, you know, it adds a lot, you know, and I mean, and a lot of the medical stuff, dude, doctors are starting to prescribe this stuff. The, the studies are, you know, they're actually doing the studies now and they're really finding that it does really have great qualities, not what we always, always wanted, just like myself, just to get fucking stoned and have a good time. But, um, I mean, like for me, dude, it helped me fucking quit drinking. I mean, mm-hmm. it was a very positive thing for me. My doctor kind of helped me with that. She didn't give a shit about the weed. It was about the fucking alcohol, you know? And, um, yeah, it definitely has a worse effect on your body. 
Yeah, speaking of, I, you know, since I'm extremely high, I probably went off on a long tangent of where we were from. But, but as far as back to the industry, um, no, it's got it's got its protocols, man, and it's it's monitored from when it's a fucking seed until it fucking goes out the door, man. Um, really? Yeah, you know, and it's it's the harvest process. So you know, you you harvest a plant, you know, it comes, um, it gets hung, dried. You know, we take it down. Um, you know, there's ways to check the plants and shit. Um, you know, to make sure that everything's correct and where it's supposed to be. It's 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 a really cool fucking science to watch it be done. But it really just comes down to fucking touch and feel, man, and just paying attention. Um, and then, uh, you know, then it goes through its processing and getting it, you know, to where it could be trimmed. Um, and then, you know, it. And then from there, it just kind of goes through the process and then bagged and out the door, you know, and we do oils, the, the extracts. Um, we put out a really good oil. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I could say our name. We, it's Forbidden Farms is, is the company I work for. Um, but they put out a fucking great product, dude. I mean, literally, it's, I mean, it's, it's the only stuff I'll, you know, um, smoke because i mean i i see what goes to our facility and i'm just like fuck i i see it come in i'm like i monitor it <laughs> i fucking trace it and track it and fucking find out what store it's going to but the zips most of the zips carry all our product they carry a lot of our product yeah and yeah and we have platinum silver and blaze and then um you know it's it's the platinums are good stuff it's good stuff and anything in a jar dude is like yeah, you know, usually the top quality top That's shelf. That's that, man. Yeah, yeah. Get, generally, I, I stick. I get jars, man. But I get a, um, you know, I get an industry discount. You know, anybody in the industry, we get discount, so it helps. But yeah, I mean, it's on on any product, dude. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's ours or whatever. It's just an industry industry thing. If you're in the industry, nice. So, do you have to get like a special? You've had to get a special license to do that, didn't you? No, they, you mean as far as when I got hired and shit? Yeah. No, they just do, you know, they, they background checks, dude. I mean, they're, it's, it's, they're very thorough about who is hired. It's a privilege, you know, kind of the work in the industry. I mean, I mean, it, a lot of people do it and everything. They, everybody has their way of doing it, you know, and a lot of them still just don't want to be even legal at that. But I mean, from what I'm seeing, it's just like, why wouldn't you be legal, man? I mean, it's fruitful for everybody. It's, it's, yeah. there's a lot of people out there and everybody's doing really good, man. I mean, it's what they need to do though, is learn how to process, you know, the, the hemp itself for being processed to start working on paper and fucking, you know, clothing and all that shit. So that, you know, there's, there's hardly any waste, but you know, it's the stems and stuff um they need to figure out a good way to start using that you know what i mean yeah there's a lot dude it can fucking you know save a lot of trees i'm a tree hugger yes i'm a fucking tree hugger (laughs) yeah um i think in oregon you have to have a like a license to do it anywhere in the industry because I was looking into it for a minute, like you need well, it to be a budget. I mean, ID and everything. You have to have your ID on you, and you know that you are an employee and that you're supposed to be there. You're over 21, you know. Um, but you know, a lot of it too is like you know, and you know, if you're in there, it's you know, they you, you probably got a pretty legit background overall, or whatever. You yeah. know, it's. We, it's it's a business man i mean anyway you look at it, it's funny because you know kids will get there and they're like i got a fucking weed job it's like oh, you're fucking they're bust ass dude we we work mm-hmm. you know i do maintenance mostly I had, I had no idea i mean i had no doubts that there would be a lot of work to it like i it's a farming job oh it's yeah and it takes a it, lot a, to make those fuckers grow sometimes man well, I mean, it's just the, the whole process, man. I mean, it's just, it's a job, dude. It's, it ain't fucking, 
you know, it's you're there to fucking work, dude. I bust my ass, dude. I come home broken sometimes, you know. It's but it's fucking awesome, dude. I go, I, I work in the cannabis fucking industry. I mean, yeah. I, I, I literally fucking play guitar and work with weed. I mean, it's not a bad gig, man. Do they do you, do you got health benefits and shit there? Or? Yeah, buddy. Nice. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Sounds like you're happy, man. Uh, I'm I'm very happy, dude. We 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 like I said, we work a lot, but it's just like you know, in, in the aspect, it's it's a little bit harder for me because, like I said, I'm maintenance, dude, and I do construction down there, and you know, my work for fucking busting ass for ten hours is a lot, a little bit more physical yeah it else is down there and i'm i'm like probably probably one of the older folks that work there you know i'm fucking busting ass next to fucking kids man you know but i hang in there you know it's like it's kind of said the old man can do it get off your ass quit bitching <laughs> <laughs> pappy's you know. working get to work but yeah dude i bust ass you know and yeah. it's cool, man. I'm, I'm part of the part of the process um, for a brave new world. Yeah, man. It is a definitely a different different world. If I could smoke weed and chill the goddamn hell out, man. It's you know, mm -hmm. life's not as hard as a fucking you know, breathing in, breathing out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so which yeah. leads to good things. You know, but yeah, yeah, it's fucking, it's, it's a pretty legit business, man. It's, it's well, it's well oiled. Um, people are happy, man. You know, yeah, man. you guys got a big turnover rate there. You guys keep people around pretty good. Um, overall, I mean, like I said, you gotta be a hard worker. It's, it's, it's not for what we do. It's, it's not just get high and, and go to work. I mean, nobody there fucking smokes weed, dude. I mean, it's, it's a legit business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the only job. I, it's weird. It's probably my only job. I haven't gone too high and I work for a cannabis industry. It's <laughs> well, they probably keep weird. you busy, man. And I'm going to guess that if, you know, you get buses smoking weed on the job, you probably get into some shit, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, Everybody's very, like I said, everybody's extremely respectful, man. I mean, we're there to, you know, fucking literally grow together. Nice. You literally know, grow it, together. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's very well done. Um, yeah, man. And like I said, they put out a good product, man. Right on. Yeah, I haven't actually got a chance to try any. Um. You gave me some. I don't know what the fuck happened to it, but um, yeah, you would have to obviously walk drive to Washington to be able to get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 Tri Cities. If you're ever in Tri Cities, uh, if there's any zips or anything over there, um, we we take shit over to Tri Cities all the time, so it's over there. Yeah, they've got. Yeah, they've just opened up a couple there. Um, there's been one in Finley for quite a while, and then uh, there's this one called Nirvana. That's kind of a chain one. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one now. But for a long time, they kept tried to keep it out of the city. I don't know why it's a shithole there. So with Hermiston. I don't understand why fucking Hermiston doesn't fucking want a fucking pot shop. Because it's like fucking... <laughs> I don't know. I guess they're worried about it fucking taken away from the meth fucking industry or something. <laughs> like, it's so yeah, fucking it's dumb, man. Yeah, it's it's a weird, it's still a weird thing, dude. It's and literally, just like, places. and literally up the freeway in Pendleton, fucking 20 miles, they can see how well it's working. Like, that city could use a good fucking pot shop, and they're just like, nope. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get it, dude. It's, you know, and it's crazy, I man. It's like it's the thing that I've always said and I've always known, you know, for smoking weed for so long and and being, you know, many different places with different people and different situations, even outside of music, man, that, you know, uh, it's amazing how many people really, truly smoke weed or wish they could smoke weed. 
Yeah, there's a lot of people that are like fucking claws. You know, it's funny how many people I've ran into at that fucking pod shop in Pendleton. It's hilarious. People are. Well, it's. Yeah, it's. um, Yeah, it's crazy. The people you, you meet, they'll surprise you. It's like, you know, and it's. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. It is. Yeah, we, just go fuck, we have these joints called candy cones. They're um, oil dipped. Uh, joints wrapped in keef huh. yeah they're called candy cones they're pretty rad yeah they sound like it. it sounds like too much for me man yeah i think they're one i'm an old school flower guy man i just like fucking take little puffs off my pipe you know every once in a while i like a blunt you know but i don't fucking don't fucking smoke like a whole one to myself you know I'll take a couple puffs you know i have to be honest with you I've kind of been off of it for a minute, and I probably should start smoking it again because I've been drinking a lot. So yeah, um, yeah, no, dude, I got three ounces in my fridge right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got a lot of weed, man. I was eating a lot of edibles too, but you know, I, I, I'm getting to the point now where, you know, it's like okay, my tolerance is, has really grown on the edibles. That it's like the, this is just gonna get fucking expensive now. So I kind of backed off but i mean like you know i got a lot of hash now so i got a lot of hash i got um some buds that were fucking i got buds that were dipped in oil and wrapped in keef those are fucking fun yeah and, uh, yeah i mean and the flower nice to grow some blue dream uh you know you, there's, there's still blue dream out there pretty much anything with blue or dream in there Isn't everything's it? so fun pollinated now and, and and changed and yeah yeah greens almost get to the point where there's no more of the true strain anymore it yeah. kind of gets bred out so i mean dude the list of fucking uh, you know like like there's probably 30 40 different strains that come through wow. you know you know, it's uh, it's fun though, dude. It's it's fun seeing this stuff. I I never get tired of it. Every, <laughs> time, I it, every time I see it, I'm just kind of like, this is such a cool plant. I mean, even visually, you know, when it comes in fresh, and it's crazy. Um, fresh fresh weed smells. It, it the 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 smell the smell goes through a um a, a process also from when yeah, you can smell the difference. Yeah, when it's when it's fresh and it's uh, freshly cut and everything, it's it's got a very sweet, pungent smell to it. And uh, dude, sticky, dude. I mean, like it's legit fucking sticky. Sometimes I come oh, yeah. home with like my beard is like one giant dread. <laughs> you know, it's it's it gets everywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've gotten some clothes or where there's just so much weed in them that I can't even get it out of it unless I sat there with tweezers for a couple hours picking it out. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, my cars! Holy fuck, dude, my cars always fucking reek of weed. <laughs> I dropped off my car, my the mechanic, and I pick it up, and he's like, "So, <clears throat> this how's a new job going?" I'm like, oh, "I fucking love it." He goes, "Yeah, I bet, dude, your car fucking reeks." <laughs> And I'm just like, yep, yeah, that's life now. I I smell like weed, like everywhere I go. I usually fucking have it all over me, you know. Most of the time, you know. Driving like, your Subaru? Uh, no, poor Subaru. That Subaru went to Subaru Heaven. Did it? Yeah, I fucking finally set it off on a flatbed. What are you driving now? Uh, I just got the '88 Chevy and then uh, TJ's uh, oh, Subaru. Okay. So you take the are you taking TJ's car to work since she fucking she's working from home right now or Yeah, every once in a while, but a lot of times I just drive the van, dude. I love driving the van, you know. And and I'm so close to work, dude. I mean, like literally I'm at work in like five minutes. Nice. That that must be nice, dude, especially after commuting and fucking driving all those years and fucking I five traffic, dude. It's gotta be nice to just cruise to work in five minutes. I love having a fucking job to where I just go and park and work and then fucking drive home. And, you know, now driving doesn't seem like such a fucking chore. 
I do, I do miss a lot of the places I went because when I was driving, especially for Western, dude, you know, a lot of my customers were hillbillies, man, and they're they're they were family owned cabinet shops and door shops. I'd be going out in the fucking mountains and stuff to go to these people's um, houses and stuff to their shops. If they, you know, if they bought enough product for us, I put in the time to go, you know, take care of them. And I got to drive a lot of fucking back country around here, you know, got to fucking jump on the ferries a lot of time and a lot of cool fucking long drives. And even the lock shop every once in a while, they send me east of Washington for long drives for like one job that I'd be there for like a half hour. But, uh, but overall, dude, the, the whole I-5 corridor and anywhere around city mints where I spent most of my fucking time was just a, a it's a god awful nightmare up here, dude. Traffic wise, it's so fucked. Yeah, that's bad, dude. I don't think it'll ever be fixed. Every about the time they'll get that one side fixed, I'll have to start redoing the other side again. The whole problem, and anybody who's fucking got a fucking at least one brain cell knows the problem in fucking Seattle is they got to blow up that convention center downtown because that's where the freeway bottlenecks right there downtown seattle from oh yeah lanes, the fucking two lanes both ways mm-hmm. and unless they fix that goddamn bottleneck there they could put 50 lanes behind them it's still gonna get 50 lanes of traffic backed up for 20 miles you know mm-hmm. Unless they blew up the convention center and widened the freeway through that downtown area. Doesn't matter what they do north or south, it's going to be fucked forever. You know? And Tacoma, who knows what the fuck they're doing here, dude. <laughs> I, said it be- I said it before, and it's the contractors from the Winchester house are fucking doing our freeway. That's fucking funny. That sounds pretty fucking accurate. Yeah, never ending. Some fucking things go to nowhere. Who knows? Next thing you know, you could be fucking driving off fucking off the ramp. Mm. Oh, shit, man. We say we play some more music for these guys, and then we'll fucking come back and bullshit some more. Sounds excellent. All right, cool. So up next, we got some High Lonesome Headhunter, followed by Barbarian Wasteland Battle of Bloody Hill. We'll be right back with you guys. <laughs> One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, there's a head hunter and he's on my trail. I guess everybody that's real. Well, he says, meet me up on top that old hill. Well, careful, sweetie. Careful, sweetie. 
We're back. That was High Lonesome, Headhunter, followed by Barbarian Wasteland, Battle of Bloody Hill. For those of you guys that have not been following, I'm here with Pappy Feff from Stone Evergreen Travelers. Man of many nicknames. Some people might know him as Handsome Pepper, K. Feff, or just Kevin. Or Feff. just Feff. Or Feff. Or if your family, Kevy. Kevy. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever call you that. Sounds a little like a relationship that we don't have. It's not a relationship I have particular problems with other people having of the same sex, but we just don't share that relationship. Yeah, it's pretty just my mom. She's about the only person calling <laughs> me daddy. Yeah, speaking of that, I saw that nice uh, old school picture of you the other day in your sweet shorts with your long hair. Oh, yeah, fuck, dude, because... Uh... Yeah, my mom and dad, you know, because obviously I told my mom and dad I smoked weed years, you know, back when I was a teenager. I was probably about 15, 14, 15, when I just fucking decided, like, you know, fuck this, whatever. Talked about it. We did or whatever. We went through our shit. But, you know, they accepted it because, you know, I kept, I took care of business, you know. Mm-hmm. I was a stoner. But I back then, dude, I all my clothes had pot leaves on it, man. My coats. <laughs> My shorts, my pants, my shirts. Yeah, and I found that. I don't even know where I fucking found those shorts at. I still have them, dude. And they're still in great condition, and they still fucking fit. They'll be making some appearances. So Yeah, they look uh, cool, man. Yeah, they're fucking rad, dude. Where'd you I get them? I, I don't know. I truly, I don't know. It had to be some know. fucking off, offhand fucking head shop or some shit. Dude, the, the thing is, it's like it's got a made USA fucking tag in it, and that those shorts look like they were brand new as the day i fucking bought them huh you had to have got them in some like offhand head shop like where were you living when you got them uh were you in walla walla no i think i was in uh see where was i when i turned 21 I'm trying to remember where i was living i might have been in fucking bonnie lake or yeah. piala maybe it's, no no fuck dude i was still in kent so yeah, it was right around then. So fuck, dude. Yeah, that would have been ninety three. So the only place I could think about that that I got those is when I was doing. That's about when I started doing my little martial arts stuff, and I was driving to Spanaway outside of Tacoma, and there's this place called the Harley Hippie Hut, and I think. I might have got them there because that was like a, you could buy a lot of weed clothes there. A lot, pretty much all their clothes were weed oriented. So that's about the only thing I think comes to mind mm. where I got them. Gotcha. But yeah, 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 that was a good trip for my folks. <laughs> got 86 from the fucking El Dorado. Where was that at? Uh, Reno. We went to Reno. They took me to Reno for my 21st birthday. Why'd you get 86? And then, yeah, while we're there, fucking dude, I got 86 out of the like, uh, El, uh, El Dorado for just being me. I mean, probably because I was wearing pot leaf shit and long fucking stringy, gross fucking hair. And uh, <laughs> the El Dorado had just kind of uh, opened up and it was like the most expensive casino at that time in fucking shitty ass little Reno. And uh, apparently they just didn't like, it. you know, carved me up, took me to a little fucking interrogation room. Fucking, dude, I weighed like a buck fucking 60 back then, too. I had like, like eight security guards surrounding me, like taking me to this fucking little interrogation room. Where they're interrogating me. And I'm like, hey, I'm fucking here with my mom and my dad. <laughs> You know, but they didn't give a fuck, so they took my picture, you know, and uh, and found my mom. And it <laughs> was was my boss at that time was also on vacation in Reno, uh-huh. staying at the El Dorado, and just happened to be sitting right behind my mom when I found my mom to tell her I was eighty six. Oh shit! Yeah, and then they yeah, went, both those ladies went to the front desk and fucking raise hell. Did they get fired, or did you get fired from your job, or anything? Oh, no, no, my fucking, um, my boss knew exactly it was bullshit, dude. She knows me, dude. She was like, she's my best friend's fucking aunt, dude. She knew me before I even started working there. No, right on. 
What were you doing then? Oh, uh, I worked at a t-shirt factory. Oh, nice. Just, uh, they, they made all their shirts, prints for like, you know, the Walmarts and Fred Myers. And mm. yeah, that was an all right job. Just Did you live in like China? <laughs> well, dude, we worked the, the swing shift and we were out of a hundred and it was 150 on the night shift. We were there was only three white dudes. It was me, my buddy Jared, my buddy Corey. <laughs> you know, so it was fun though. We just got fucking high, lay out t-shirts, fucking roll them on these cards out of the machines, get yelled at by all the Asians because we didn't know what the fuck we we're doing. Stupid kids <laughs> with long hair. You know, That's <clears throat> fun. It's there for a little while. Then it went and cleaned. Air, uh, chimneys and fucking air ducts for a while. Fucking dirty ass job. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Was, that how you met TJ? was TJ your Mary Poppins? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we met at the martial arts school. I was a teacher. She was a student. Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know you were a teacher. I thought you guys were all students. No, I was a I was an instructor for for about five years. Oh Six shit! Years. I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, still still do it. I still keep in touch. I'm broken now with other dude now. It's it's more it's, it's something that's just kinda of keep me in shape. You know. It's fun, dude. It was it's been fucking been pretty awesome. I have been doing it since I was fucking nineteen. <laughs> so fuck dude, almost fucking twenty years. How often do you think you do karate or martial arts? Oh, now these days, fuck, dude. Only if I had to get to a fight, yeah. I'd probably fucking. It would depend if if I didn't win within the first ten seconds, it's probably over because I gas out. Huh. I gotta hit them hard first time, or yeah, I'd fucking wheeze out. I have no cardio. Hmm. Plus, I'm old, dude. My shoulder would probably pop out. The last, dude, the last <laughs> fight, I fucking. Last fight I started, I fucking threw my shoulder out in the first fucking two seconds. Oh. Throw, throw it at the person. It was in the it was in a mosh pit at a ministry concert. Uh, well, hopefully you won. Yeah, well, the dude didn't want to fight, so but then I had a fucking I was in the middle of the pit with a fucking dislocated shoulder. And I'm like, fuck. There was a lot of fucking crown royal that night. Yeah. Yeah, it was right during a just one fix figures. It's so you think good concerts lately? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's the best concert you went to in 2020? But the last show we the last concert we went to actually I think was Tyler Childers at the Paramount in October. Yeah. Yep, and then before that was two weeks before that was uh the Gallows, Scott Byram and uh Urban Pioneers up in Portland. Um, oh, shit. I forgot what I was going to say. Have you heard Sturgill Simpson's new albums at all? Gotten Grass ones? No, actually I haven't. They're good. You should check them out, man. Yeah, I, I got the... Uh, I've, been, I've been paying for Spotify now, so it's... Oh, that's been fucking it's bad. worth it, man. As much as it fucks artists over, I, I secretly love Spotify. Hey, the thing is, dude, if people fucking got records, dude, I still buy records. So I still I still buy the music. Even though I can get it on Spotify, I still will go buy somebody's record if they got a record. Yeah, I got you. I love fucking records. In fact, we got to start getting more cabinetry for more records. Kind of tapped out right now. Yeah, I'm in the same place right now, actually. Um, and I don't ever even listen to mine, so... Um, once I get this office, I'm going to move a bunch in there and start listening to them while I work in there and shit. Um, but anyway, so what have the travelers been up to? You said you, you had some things to talk about the travelers. Let's talk about the travelers. Yeah, dude. Fucking, um, I've actually been, a, like I said, a very productive stoner through this COVID thing. And uh, I pretty much I have. Um, we're still mapping some of the songs out, um, you know, and tying things together and, you know, and getting everybody to learn their parts but i pretty much have our um, our new al or our album written our next album is is fully written it's just got to be organized uh -huh. um, so i mean lyrics i got fucking lyrics um pretty much all the guitar music there's a few songs that i'm still 
piecing together and it just seems like more and more ideas just keep coming and coming for songs and i'm just kind of like at a point where it's like i don't want this to be like a double fucking album you know what i mean i I gotta i'm gonna start kind of picking and choosing um but we do have some solid songs that that uh are definitely done and ready to be um there's a few songs actually we could actually um uh, our buddy adam the guy bought that that 5150 from that Mm -hmm. pv um he plays with baby and the nobodies um Quick story, dude. He was the old guitar player for CJ and Trip that I replaced back in the early '90s when oh, really? he to go to something else. So anyhow, but I've known him forever, and he's got a recording studio out at his house. And um, you know, he really wants to record the upright, but he said, you know, when we got about three songs together, that we could just um, go down there and just do a three-song demo, and we just kind of, you know, for free, you know, just a quick one, not like brilliantly, but give him the, to record some instruments that he has never recorded that he wants to. And in, in return, we get a fucking three song demo. So we'll have some kind of like new stuff to kind of share um, as we're writing it. I'm not going to be afraid to, if we feel comfortable with a song, if we have kind of a decently ghetto recording, you know, we might, you know, share some sneak peeks of, of what we got going on because it's, um, it's pretty fucking epic, dude. I, I went down a rabbit hole with the music that I wrote for the new album. I mean, I wrote a 15 minute goddamn song. Um, epic opus, fucking two part. Um, yeah, it's it's monstrous. And there's a couple, there's a, there's quite a few songs that are like really monstrous as far as um, how I, uh, uh, what's the word i'm trying to fucking say how i uh wrote them you know the parts there's a lot of parts and pieces it's not like hard to follow it's just you know i I, i'm a kid from the 80s and i fucking love 70s and 80s music that's my favorite fucking music and shit was fucking epic back then i mean people wrote fucking songs with parts and fucking moods and stuff like that so i just kind of you know just kind of went with it and um you know and wrote some pretty epic fucking songs but still in the traveler's vein you know of what we do um you know a lot of the lyrics are still a lot of the same bullshit things that one can sing about you know there's only so many fucking things and it's gonna sound like fucking genesis or some shit like that which we're not um but we've been yeah we've been very productive man it's we got a lot of cool ideas um, going in and recording the new album, I, I'm, I want to approach it differently um, than we did the last two albums. Um, you know, uh, you know, be a little bit more creative. It's going to be probably one of those albums too, where it's it's truly going to have its recorded album versions, and then there's going to be the live versions. Because I'm not going to be afraid to kind of go in on this album and maybe do a little bit of layering, you know? Yeah, I got you. But, you know, it's it was done again, you know, back in the 80s and the 70s. A lot of that music was like that. It was like the albums were fucking produced and they were fucking epic and badass. But then live, they were just stripped down fucking rock songs again. You know, so it was cool that that way to be able to create. And that's kind of how I've always created The Travelers to be something that we can do whatever the fuck we want whenever we want and however we want it there's no there's no rhyme or reason i have no fucking plan um i have no direction or really care about that it's just we're just doing what's happening at the moment but with that being said though <laughs> since i went so epic on this album i think i'm going to kind of concentrate on maybe just writing some simpler songs some just simple rock songs like record punk rock or you know simple 80s butt rock style progressions where it's just more simpler um because this, this album is actually kind of not overwhelming me but it's um i got so much going on through my head and i don't want it to be like that bruce springsteen album where they just kept adding and adding and adding and it was a great album. I can't remember actually which album it was. 
um, drawing a blank on that. But, you know, there's got to be a, a point where you cut off the madness and just kind of do what we do. This album might be a little bit more expensive. <laughs> hmm. But, you know, fuck it, whatever. I mean, this is this is my legacy. This is what I'm, I'm, I'm doing and spending a little extra to, to make this, capture this moment in time and make it fucking badass and everything. I'm not really too, I'm not going to worry about that anymore. You know, still keep it within means, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but also with that being said, you know, why we want to do a couple little treats here and there is because I'm also, I'm not going to rush this album. Um, I kind of felt we kind of rushed the last one a little bit. Um, I'm not, I'm totally happy with it, but I feel like if it, it, it could have waited a few more months to get honed in, I think we actually could have done it a little bit better justice. Not that I'm disappointed in it again, but um, but these songs are just the way that they're so epic. I'd also go, you know, to save money, I want to make sure that we go in like with a fucking full 100% plan of what's going on with everything. You know? Yeah, it makes so, sense. Um, so, but yeah, and it's, you know, me and TJ are doing some fucking cool stuff together. Um, I'm looking forward to doing your fucking uh, 80s thing. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to... I need to start promoting that again. So I'm hoping we get some more participation, though, man. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, it's hard to get anybody to want to do shit. They Everybody asks to do shit. And then when I start to do it, nobody wants to fucking do it, you know? Everybody wanted this really bad. And now that I'm trying to do it, nobody wants to fucking do it. So it's kind of sucks. Yeah, dude, it's... Honestly, I might just cancel it at this point, you know, because, uh, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, well, we're still, we're basically, the songs that we're, uh, that we were going to do for it, we're still learning, and it's going to be part of the, that's the other thing the Travelers have been doing. We've learned, been, been learning a lot of fucking cover tunes. Yeah. Just adding, you know, and we're going outside of the box, you know, like I said, uh, we're doing some 80s tunes, and, you know. Uh, yeah, I want to, dude. When we tour together, I want to do Fortunate Son. Oh, absolutely, dude. I knew yeah, you guys we... were doing that. I think I would fucking slay that. And I've also been listening to the Clutch version of it, because you said it's more like the Clutch version. Yep, yeah, yeah. We, and we I think and I then, and, better with that, even. And I'll put this on record, too, that uh, truthfully, and this is no bullshit, we were working on doing that song before Clutch actually put out their version. So we don't technically rip off clutch because that was kind of the direction that the travelers play and we were kind of doing it too but obviously clutch is much bigger and has more money and <laughs> put out a pretty badass product but with that being said that is how we do it because well, i think out. anybody naturally i think you guys would have to do it that way you know so if you were working on it it doesn't surprise me that that's it turned out more like clutch's version than ccr's because you have to adjust a little bit for your voice and your voice is a bit like the dude from clutches in a lot of ways. So it makes sense that that's the direction you would go, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'll take that as a compliment too. I love clutch, man. They are fucking a bad ass fucking band to see live. man. I'm actually like, I mean, I could see them being good live, but I I've never really, I don't know. I can't get into them that much. I don't know, dude. Fucking throw in blast tyrant or fucking, uh, psychic warfare mm -hmm. uh, i've listened to most of their stuff because a lot of my you know a lot of people i know love them so i've given them a lot of chances and there's a couple things seen, they do i like i like to work out to clutch yeah, but have you seen them live yet no that's another thing i would like to see them live though i'm sure they're yeah. great live dude yeah it's it's a whole different animal live dude. they're a fucking great fucking live rock band yeah 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 speaking of uh you know jamming with you and you seem to be getting some uh since i'm in your band i guess we can talk about what dog bites got going on too well dude i think i want to start recording pretty quick man i think yeah. uh, my idea is is because i want to put something out i'm tired of waiting and but songs but I, I don't know this was an idea that i had but now songs are starting to come because i've been sending you little pieces for like months now but the thing is is I sent you the stuff. Good, I sent you the stuff, and then I'm like, I hate it later. 
So I just give up on it, you know. So the the one I just did is the first one I like that I've done completely since the one that Honeycut helped me write. But uh, um, so my thought is I kind of just want to see where the road goes with writing new material. But I think. I'm going to bring back a lot of songs from my Useless and Alone album, which has been kind of popular to do. And I've kind of like fucking been riding people's asses about this, especially on the label. Like Felix wants to redo his whole fucking, like a lot of his fucking self-titled album and not to throw Felix under the bus. Cause we've talked about this in, in length anyways. So he knows how I feel about it, but I just, I, I, I'm kind of like, people have just been doing that too much, I think. Like, redoing their old songs. You know, and it kind of bugs me a little bit. So I don't want to, I don't want to yeah, do without, that. Yeah, with that being said, The Travelers, I was, I am bringing some of our old tunes back that we haven't played in a long time. I was that would make sense, though. Because with you guys, that first album that you did had some good songs on it, but it wasn't recorded very well. And it wasn't the best travelers. And yeah. that's kind of where my thought process goes with this idea is, you know, off the useless and alone album, I think some of that stuff is my best songwriting. And I think my voice is really good on that album, but I couldn't play guitar for shit. The recordings were, I mean, they're pretty good for what they were, I guess, but they, um, and I mean, I necessarily, I mean, they weren't that great. I just don't want, it was a free album and the guy that, did it went on to be a really good engineer so i don't want to throw him under the bus and tell him i think it's shit because i don't think it's shit for what it was but mm. I, I i know that it can be done better you know also you know with having you guys now i want to hear what a lot of those songs sound like with the band behind it with thoughtful parts put into it like big fish has been a song i've had since i was 19 yeah. like i want to see hear that with the drums and with you on guitar and TJ on bass, you know, and I want to hear, you know, there's a bunch of fucking songs on that album that I want to hear. Curtain Call. Are you are you still considering picking up the electric on some of this? Yeah, stuff? but not on this one. I'm right. not ready yet. Financially, I'm not ready to start picking up the electric. Right. right. So right. maybe that'll be where I go next time. Um. So that yeah, so, dude i fucking i always like fucking playing with you really but i'm nice. thinking i'm thinking half new songs half old ones and it might end up being a fairly long album yes well dude that's kind of like what we're doing too it's i guess it's the it's time for epicness i mean well and how people want it now man everybody's like everybody wants singles you know they don't want fucking whole albums and it sucks i'm trying to to be that old guy with my feet in the sands, you know, and not willing to fucking adjust with times. But yeah. that one's real hard for me to let go. Like just releasing oh. a single like every month, you I'll know, releasing a whole fucking album, you know, I'll always do an album. That's kind of where I'm at. You know, I don't think the people on the label want to release their shit that way, you know, cause we're, I am trying to get some younger artists, you know, no offense to your old ass, but you know, I do want, I want some young blood and in, in on the label, you know, fucking along with us old timers, you know, I just want a big group of diverse ages and whatever, you know, I'm not even particularly partial to one style of music, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. But I, uh, I'd like to see some youngsters on there. So if, if they, you know, if that's how they want to release their shit, fucking great, you know. But I don't think I'll release any of my shit that way, or you know, I don't think I, mean, I don't mind. Like you know, if, if we had a song and it was recorded, because I I do have, you know, like I said, there's so many, so many ideas that I got going on for this next album that just like. I don't want to have a whole bunch of fucking songs on there because I have some really, a couple really long ones on there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but you know, that being said though, it's like, there's, there's enough songs and there's a few songs that I want, you know, that I'm, that we're doing that I want to re like, um, re 
we touch up like blood under a bright blue sky i mean that song you know i listened to it and i fucking it was actually one of my very first lyrics and songs but i listened to it and i'm just like i still fucking love the lyrics and if we came back and kind of approached the music just a little bit differently especially with misha you know that was one of the first songs that she put a part to um and we started playing live but we haven't played it in years but um I don't think it really fits the mood of the new album. Mm-hmm. It would be cool to like fucking do as like if someone like if you're doing another compilation album or something or some cool thing like that, we'll have a song that's not from an album that we could give. Because, um, you know, like a lot of like the movie soundtracks that people, you know, back in the day when bands submitted fucking songs for movie soundtracks and you got all these cool, obscure stuff. Um, that was never on albums just on these other things you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah it was like um i was watching youtube um i can never say his name in you um the uh music score writer he did a song with roger waters for a movie and I'm, it's escaping me the name of it now um uh, the song's called lost boys something or other but then come find out that the fucking solo guitar work was fucking Eddie Van Halen, huh. you know, and found through these, uh, through my Eddie Van Halen hole I've been in since he passed, or actually since I was fucking 10. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just still so much stuff that it's amazing that you find these little gems. Dude, like Pink Floyd, dude, you know, they, they did a couple albums that were fucking movie soundtracks. They weren't actually studio albums. They're uh, studio soundtracks. Really? Neil Young did the same thing for uh, it's a Dead Dead Man fucking uh, movie with Johnny Depp and uh, somebody. It was all black and white. It was a Western. And Neil Young doesn't sing in it, but he just plays weird parts through the whole thing. Well, it's just like um, the Chris Christopherson and um, uh, Coburn... Um, Fuck, now nah, his name. That was fucking weed. But anyhow, um, the uh, Billy Kid and Pat, Bar- Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, you know, when Chris Christopherson was really young and um, Bob Dylan was really young, he was actually in the movie, hmm. but Bob Dylan did the soundtrack for that. Oh, really? Actually, where Knocking on Heaven's Door came from that soundtrack. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, fucking. Oh, uh, fuck. Chris Christopherson's fucking young, dude, kid. It's good. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. I'll Pat check it out. Billy. About Billy the Kid, is that you said? It's Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Huh. James Colburn and fucking um, is Pat Garrett and uh, Chris Christopherson is Billy Kid. Huh. I can't believe I never heard of that. I'm a fucking big I forget what Bob Dylan's character was, but it was actually, a, he had actually a pretty prominent part. Didn't do a lot of talking, but he was always in the scenes and shit. So I wonder if he was one of Billy's gang members. I, I think he was. I think he was one of those um, people that was just always around, part of the gang. You know, part I'm gonna of look for that. I'm gonna totally look for that now. Um, yeah. Cool, man. And dude, if you ever want to watch like the best Bonnie and Clyde, it's with a uh, fucking uh, Warren Beatty and uh, oh fuck, dude, goddamn weed. I can't remember her name. Um, but that. Um, yeah, dude, that fucking uh, Bonnie and Clyde is fucking fantastic. They did a uh, Netflix just did a thing about uh, the guys that caught Bonnie and Clyde, and uh, it's called The Highway Man. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't watched Kevin Costner and Woody Harrelson, and it. it's really fucking good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'm all I'm all about outlaws, man. I love outlaw shit. But Bonnie and Clyde were fucked up, man. Like I don't think I can get on board with them, you know? Yeah, no, no, they're not they're they're not definitely not even anti heroes. They were it's not like the- Billy the Kid, you know, where I can get on board with Billy the Kid. You know, Billy Kid didn't like a lot of the people that Billy shot weren't innocent people, you yeah. know? Or well, even- Jesse James, in some sense, you know, well, just the diabolical fucking story of those two men and 
how they fucking caught him and took him down and just yeah it's fucking they didn't have a choice they're killing fucking cops and fucking people left and fucking right man it was the point where they were just fucking enjoying it you know yeah yeah fuck yeah we uh where were we oh it was when we were in vegas it was different we went to the the mobster museum me and tj and they had part of the the wall the brick wall there from the saint valentine day massacre oh wow yeah, they had that. They had part of the wall. There's still like fucking bullet holes in the fucking brick and shit. Jesus. Yeah, that's really fucking cool, dude. You could spend hours in that fucking building, dude. Yeah, man. I'd like to go there, dude. I'm not really a Vegas dude, but that's the kind of shit I always miss when I go there, you know? Yeah. It's a town yeah, of great like history. One block off Fremont in the old town. Pretty badass. And they have a fucking speakeasy in the basement. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's cool. They like you know order order your drink. They fucking slide you this book, and then here's your book to read. Then you open it up, and then there's a bottle of flask of b- booze in the fucking in the <laughs> book and shit. It was pretty cool. <clears throat> of course, I obviously I didn't drink, but they had great espresso with the fucking actual <clears throat> that the crystal sugar on the fucking sticks. The real fucking shit. Put that in the fucking coffee. Oh, dude, I got fucking. When we went to Vegas on that trip, my buddy Rich, he made these fucking weed pills <laughs> that were fucking ridiculous, dude. We we got there and we it, it was the first night and we we went to his house. He goes, "Here, take one of these fucking weed pills." I'm like, "All right, cool." Not knowing the adventure I was going to go on, um, and uh, we went to Vegas to Fremont. And we're walking around, it's kicking in. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And then we went down to the one end and uh, we got a prime rib dinner, dude. And as we're eating, dude, that fucking pill started kicking in. And I'm just like, I was like, whoa. I mean, it was like, like mushroom fucking high. But I mean, it was like, I never got like paranoid or freaked out. But I'm just like, wow, this is fucking intense. I mean, it was fucking intense. And we were leaving <coughs> and, uh, Dude, fucking Green Day had put, had put on a free fucking show down there at Fremont, and huh. it just got over. So when we hit fucking Fremont, dude, there was thousands of people everywhere. Huh. And I'm just fucking starting to peek on this fucking thing, and I just grabbed the back of Tanya's fucking shirt. I'm like, don't lose me because you will not find me. <laughs> but we made it out of there, and uh, yeah, we ate those. Dude, they were fucking great. I mean, they were like nine-hour pills. Fuck and that! Like too much four, weed. <laughs> there was like four or five hours that were like literally like I hope the Russians don't invade because. <laughs> dude, I was saving, Felix like, Thursday high. Yeah, dude, I was fucking for about an hour and a half. I was saving wasps in a fucking pool. I watched a fucking wasp like come back from the dead. Weird. Uh, for literally like fucking it had it could have been like five minutes but it seemed like 30 minutes watching this thing fucking dead on the fucking ground and then after about a half hour it started moving and then fucking shaked it off and flew and then flew right back into the water i watched a fucking wasp eat a butterfly one time yeah they're just fucking assholes yeah they're pricks man well shit man what do you say we play some fucking music and then we'll come back and finish this bitch off yeah man um so up next we've got the spinning cobras built for speed followed by witch burn bleed the stone we'll be right back with you folks to send you out <laughs>
perfect I'll own it with pride You can't see past it Bound by the veil behind which you Spinning Cobra is built for speed. Fuck, I can't talk, man. Uh, that was Spinning Cobras. And I keep calling it Cobras. Cobras. It cobras. Built for speed, followed by Witchburn, Bleed the Stone. So, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, dude. Just uh, as I was on uh, the tangent always goes, your guitar behind you, I just fucking glanced up and your Obey sticker, I thought it said Orgy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Orgy was. Uh, I I listened to Orgy in high school. Did you? Do you, you? You ever hear the band Orgy? Oh yeah, fuck yeah, I remember Orgy. Yeah, uh, yeah as I was, said, it might have like been a little out of your time range. No, that was kind of like that was the beginning of the whole industrial shit, you know? Because oh yeah, came out, you know, and then there was Power Man Five Thousand, Manson, fucking bunch of hot water prodigy and that shit was all fucking coming out and i was into it for for a while because i really was into fucking ministry and stuff yeah and um you know the, the rest kind of follow suit or whatever i i've been listening to you know a lot of i just recently been getting fucking into romstein again yeah, yeah. And then, um, his other band uh lindman where it's just uh that's the singer's last name lindman it's a little bit like um, Romstein, but they, it, it kind of does some more unique stuff, you know, some uh, almost traditional style German music, you know. Oh, but, that'd be kind of cool to hear. I hate fucking, I fucking hate Romstein though. Gotta hate that shit. Yeah. Dude, there's, there's a too much fucking, techno in that shit. One of the um, Lindman videos, um, the whole video is him just getting his fucking ass kicked. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. that, and, uh, yeah, I've been kind of listening to, getting into more heavier stuff again, more listening to a lot more, you know, metal. I've been experimenting some friends at work. I can never remember band's names, though. I got it. It's kind of like in my Spotify as the ones I looked up. But, uh, but you know who fucking impressed me and that just still impresses me is, uh, and has always been one of my favorite bands since the 80s is Testament. Testament? Yeah, dude. Talk about a metal band that is just fucking still putting out classic fucking albums, dude. I mean, they just, uh, yeah, they've been kicking ass. That's where it's kind of like a lot of the influence through the Ninja Travelers album. Um, you know, because I've been, I went into, a, you know, especially a whole metal. Um, you know, I'm always on a Metallica kick, but I mean, finding old bands like Corner and fucking you know and you know really starting to listen to exodus and fucking nuclear salt and you know them and plus dude one of my most favorite fucking new metal bands which is just at, utterly tragic that the singer passed away last year um was power trip yeah. dude <clears throat> that band 
should have been fucking in the 80s with the fucking the big thrash bands man these guys really fucking are are just you know i watched their live videos do their fucking just one of those bands uh, there's actually though they have a live uh cd and i think um it's on spotify their live show is from seattle and dude, they just fucking just stomp on your face crushingly badass and the riffs I mean, some just amazing fucking guitar metal riffs. Right on. Yeah, I haven't listened to much of that, man. I've been uh, obsessed with um, your favorite band, Van Halen, also. <laughs> yeah. You I've know. Been learning, I've been learning a lot of, um, dude, my finger tapping is fucking hitting next level. Legendary yeah. shit. There's a lot of shit. Uh, you know, honestly, man, there's a lot of things that I'm coming around to the older I get. And I think it's mainly, or not mainly, but I think some of it has to do with, I've just listened to everything that's already been put out so much as far as mainstream goes, that finally I'm coming back around to some things that I might not have always liked as much, but are kind of speaking to me now, like Motley Crue and Van Halen, I both, I fucking hated both of those bands for a long time. But I like they, them both they, now. They 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 put out really good fucking music. I mean, the songs. I you know. I mean, you know, Motley Crue's. I mean, a lot of people just associate, you know, the the looks a lot with the music. But I'm telling you, man, a lot of those, especially like the OG ones that were like the first ones of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like even some of the Death Breath ones. Like Tesla was kind of a Death Breath one that I it think is severely not. underrated. I fucking love Tesla. Tesla is straight up one of my favorite fucking bands. And dude. One you introduced me to that I like quite a bit now is Faster Pussycat. Oh, dude! Especially the first, the first three albums are very well done. I mean, and dude, I seen them live, dude, and they fucking kick ass, fucking live. Yeah, I think I, I think for the '80s thing, I'm gonna do House of Pain. Actually, oh, you fucking fucker! That's what I'm doing. Oh, really? All right, I won't do it then. We'll do it together, dude. We'll do it as a fucking duet. We'll stare at each other or a fucking eye. <laughs> I didn't know you were doing a faster pussy. I think now that I now that I, I remember, I think you told me you were doing a faster pussy cat album. Yeah. Well, or we're just going to throw in that in mine and TJ's fucking uh, acoustic set. There's some other shit I could do. I'm going to do Dramarama, too. You ever listen to any Dramarama? Dude, fucking my old C, CJ and Trip. Um, we used to do um, Anything, Anything. That new song I just did reminds me a lot of Drama Rama. I've actually been listening to a lot of them lately, and they actually put out an album like a couple months ago. That oh, was right. really fucking good. Um, yeah. For a bunch of guys that, like, because they put out one. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Probably, I don't know. You're a Mark Lanigan fan, aren't you? Oh, yeah. You remember the Gutter Twins? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the fucking gutter twins was fucking. That was also with uh, Greg Dooley. He was. Uh, I didn't really Atlanta. like him, to, to be honest. And I didn't like the gutter twins. And this brings me around to back to Mark Lanigan solo stuff. I don't like his fucking new album either. And uh, it's probably because it reminds me a lot of the gutter twins. Right. Well, that's kind of what it is, dude. But live, dude, I think it's also one of those things, man. If you saw it live, it might be a little. Because, you know, I, I wasn't into it until I went and saw him live. Right. And then I kind of understood a little bit better. And it was, you know, that happens to me a lot. You know, I mean, there's a lot of bands that I'm just kind of like, listen to them and I'm just kind of like, oh, hum. I'm like, because like, you know, Radiohead, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I listen on the radio. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, that's a fucking really good song. But I'm just like, well, whatever. And me and TJ, we went to, she took me to see uh, Radiohead. What? Hey, what album was that on, TJ? Touch me. Yeah. Um, but it would have been early 2000s or whatever. But, dude, fucking live, it, it changed me, man. They were so fucking good live. It was, you know, a game changer. Now when I listen to the albums, I listen to them differently because I respect them because I'm like, that was a legit live show. Yeah. I think that's how it would have been with the White Stripes if I never saw them live. Yeah, uh, I've been listening to a little bit more Jack White, too. One of the best fucking, probably the best concert I ever saw was the White Stripes. Hank yeah, that's 3, what a lot of people said. Hank uh, 3 was fucking close second. 
But, you know, sometimes it's those those amazing moments because, like, dude, fucking like Jane's addiction. You know, when they first came out, you know, I, I, a lot of my friends in Walla Walla were listening to, you know, nothing shocking and they're like, check this out, check this out. And at that point in time, I was really diving into like metal, dude. I was getting really heavy. And, but I mean, like I said, I wasn't like a fool. It's like, I was like, yeah, that's good music. And then, um, then they released the ritual de habitual. And then, um, I think it was like a Friday or something after school and they were playing up in Cheney, Washington. Huh. and a bunch of friends were going they had no the fuck were they playing at in cheney dude fucking uh they were playing at the college in the fucking gymnasium no oh. and uh yeah they said they're just like hey we got a fucking extra jane's addiction ticket it's like you want to go i'm like fuck yeah why not you know and uh dude holy fuck dude it was <clears throat> it was insane they were so fucking good i mean that was one of those other you know moments and then when i started listening to them again i was like fucking i've always been into it but it's weird watched, sometimes you know i watched an interview with perry farrell the other day with uh tom uh broke off <laughs> really yeah it was interesting man it was really good uh perry farrell man what an interesting dude i've always kind of liked jane's addiction i've never been like super into him i remember when i first hit like the grunge phase in high school i kind of listened to him a bit but uh i fucking that guy's really interesting man really interesting cat i kind of like the vibe he puts off he's very um i don't know very uh spiritual in the kind of way i like somebody to be spiritual in, i guess you know speaking of um me and TJ, we watched this documentary on psychedelics. <clears throat> and uh, dude, Sting, somebody that I, I never, I've always been a police fan. Uh, I've liked a lot of Sting solo stuff. I'm not like, you know, super fan or whatever. But holy shit, dude, that dude's a fucking druggie. And he's like, like peyote and shit like that. He was <clears throat> talking about the first time he fucking did peyote. Is that the one they animate? Yeah, on some of the things. It's on Netflix. Yeah, I sh- I I started watching that and I didn't get back to it. I should watch it. Oh, dude, it's rad. His story about peyote and the cow and the fucking farm and the cow. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. I'm like, dude. I'm. It's like, how do you keep it together, dude? Holy shit. But yeah, that was a pretty good documentary. All over it was fucking. I've been doing. I've been dabbling back into mushrooms again too. Really, I'm thinking about thinking about crossing that realm again with a little bit. You know, I, I, I'm just so fucking stuck up about it, though. Like, I'm kind of like a. I guess I'm getting like a parent to my own self now. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm not as free, willy nilly about what I take or smoke nowadays. You know. Like, so if I get something and I don't know what it is, I'm not just going to take somebody's word on that it's okay. You know, even if I trust that person quite a bit, you know? And so, like, when I was taking mushrooms quite a bit, there was only, like, two kinds that were pretty regular that you would see around here, and that were Liberty Caps and Cubanzies, you know? And Liberty Caps, you could, at, at that point in time... I don't know how they are now because I don't know a lot about it, but at that point in time, you could have ate a pound of Liberty Caps and been fine, you know, but uh, you're pretty safe with taking, you know, an eighth of Cubenzies. You'd have a pretty good fry. Uh, But these mushrooms I got, they didn't, I don't know, they didn't look like anything I'd ever seen. I didn't know shit about them, you know, so I had just ended ended up passing them off to Felix. And my mom, because I was just like, I'm not going to take them, you know. If I get my hands on some old school Cubenzies, I'd take a little bit, probably, if the mood was right and Mm -hmm. I was alone. You know, I got to be in the right frame of mind, too, you know, in in the right circumstance. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's how we are, too. I mean, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, you know, for certain things like that, too. And I've, and I'm able to get stuff that's, you know, I know how much I'm taking too. So it's kind of, you know, it's be able to dose it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, 
Yeah, no, it's it's the, definitely the right moment because it's a commitment for one. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, but I'm taking lower dosages too. So I mean, it's just like you know, it's not like I'm fucking like okay, right. I'm on a fucking eight hour trip here. It's like you know, take enough where you know, man, three three or four hours of some fucking cool meditation. You know. Yeah that's what i want out of it you know and that's how i used to take them really you know probably i would say probably slightly above the meditation area is where i was at you know but but the thing is is i don't know what's too far these days you know my tolerance to everything is much lower than it used to be and i don't react well to things i don't like as well as i used to like if if I if I were to have a bad mushroom trick, it would probably set me off into severe anxiety for days. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. the line of work I do and stuff like that. I just can't afford to fucking be in that frame of mind for that long. I have to be grounded like all the time. You know, I got kids. I got a fucking job that requires me to be functional, and not only functional, I have to be empathetic and understanding to other people's feelings all the time and you know me that's yeah. already fucking not you know my bag so i'm faking that half the time so you put that kind of stress and anxiety on my fucking plate like it ain't happening so it's not good for my fucking residents not good for my job it's not good for me so like well probably then good word of word of mouth if if i'm around and you're around and i have chocolate ass <laughs> Cause I just, yeah, I, uh, I'll just wait, you know? And like, so I didn't gotta be to work for a few days and just perfect timing with kids not around. I kind of like to be alone too, man. I'm not like a social mushroom eater and I never fucking have been. I was always the dude that would fucking disappear on my friends when they were all frying balls and acting silly, you know? And it goes back to that that show we watched, and what I really liked about it too is like they go through the rules, they go through the rules, and there are certain rules that you just have to abide to make sure you fucking go to the right place, you know. Uh-huh. You know, and there's just and that's that was one of the biggest one. Who are you with? Who is with you? You know, and that's straight up first and foremost. You know, so. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not over, you know, looking to fucking see God or anything like that. It's just, you know, I want to see some colors. I just want to. Well, I think you know, it's good, man. You know, I think, I think, I think I can be sincerely honest with, with everybody. When I say taking mushrooms made me a genuinely better person, I think. Mm-hmm. You In know, moderation. I mean, that's another thing. You know, we go back to the science of it and they've been really been studying psilocybin. Well, to be honest with you, too, even even when I overdid it, I think I gathered something from that even, you know? So uh, I don't think there's any time I've really taken them where, it, well, maybe once, one time I took them where I really don't think they did anything good for me, which was the last time I took them. Yeah. But even the time I had a really, really, really bad trip, I think I gathered a lot out of that. I learned a lot about myself and I learned a lot about what I was doing in my life. At that point in time, it really made me, when I had that bad trip, I wasn't doing shit with myself. And it kind of was like, there was a lot of questioning, like, what are you doing with yourself? Like, pull your head out of your ass kind of things, you know? And it was scary and it bugged me for months. And it was, I felt like shit for days after I did it, you know? But I think I came out a better person. And my life actually kind of started moving forward pretty progressively after that, you know? I've been stuck in a rut for about two years until I did those, but yeah, yeah, that was kind of one of the things that Sting was saying too about trips, man. I mean, you always learn something from everything, and even the bad ones. I mean, it's just um, they you know, said some, if some you're supposed to a little too far and deep. But. Yeah, well, if you're if you're having a bad one, it's probably for a reason. You know, it's probably because your headspace isn't good. Yeah, my, you know, that's where I'm at right now. My headspace is fucking solid overall, you know? Mine's getting better, man, and that's why I think I might be ready to, like, just do a little micro dose soon. You know, maybe this summer, probably. When well, the I'm, I'm getting them, you know, I always have them. As long as I can get them, I'll have them, because that's kind of a route I'm taking now. 
in moderation. It's, it's not going to be like in every game, you know, every weekend. It's, it's moderation at the time presents itself. I'm like, fuck yeah, this is happening. You know, but in moderation, you know, I'm not looking to fucking fuck anything up, but I think it's good for the psyche. And, you know, like I said, man, I've, now the one thing this COVID has given me is some clarity on a lot of fucking things, man. And it's all been positive. And from here on out, man, it's just kind of, it's, it's not being stupid and still making right decisions, but, you know, um, I'm just going to live in the moment. You know, what's yeah, I in, think, front of, in front of me, and that's what's happening. I think you're. I think you hit the nail on the head with that, man. With this, which with as fucking tired of this shit as I am, and with as ready as it as I am for it to be over, I'm pissed off at everybody too. I'm pissed off at fucking all ends of this spectrum. I'm pissed off at the fucking idiots that don't want to wear the masks or take the vaccines, and I'm fucking pissed off. I know we didn't say we're going to go get too political here, but uh, I'm going to get a little political. But I'm pissed off on the other end, too, because the fucking lawmakers in my state and your state, because our state's following what your state does 90% of the time. Fucking your governor will set some shit in place and then my governor will hop suit and fucking follow like two weeks later. So basically, we're a lot of the times we're doing what you're doing. So, um, But I, I'm not fucking happy with any of it. You know, there's a lot of bullshit. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of fucking double standards. That oh, are just, yeah. And then it's kind of like the fuck, man. It's kind of like. Well, here in Oregon, you they're, they're doing this shit where in a lot of counties, if you're extreme, if, it, if it's an extreme risk county, you can't have people eating in a restaurant, but they can eat in a fucking heated tent outside. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? You can get fuck. You can't fucking eat inside because you get COVID, but you can eat outside and get fucking pneumonia and COVID. Yeah. What in the fuck, man? Like either my thing is is either fucking do it or don't fucking do it because well, that's a whole debate. I mean, because even when you talk about the airplanes, they're fucking packing the airplanes. The fucking airports are packed. I mean, you fucking you go to the grocery store. The grocery store is fucking packed. Yeah. You know, there's so many places that are fucking packed on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Then you can't go to an outdoor fucking live show. I mean, yeah, or I can't go to the gym. You know, I'm yeah. tipping. I'm tipping the scale of 400 pounds. I'm not too worried about COVID right now. You know, like I'm more fucking worried about my fucking diabetes and my fucking weight getting worse, which it has since this shit started. You know, and I was doing really well before it started, but these fucking people can go eat in a fucking tent outside a restaurant, but I can't go to the fucking gym. It's fucking frustrating as fuck, you know? Like I said, both sides are pissing me off. And it's kind of just like, it's kind of with the election. Both sides piss me off there. I just think, like, it's just fucking stupid. I'm over it, man. I took the vaccine. I need to get my second round soon. Um, Hopefully the vaccine fucking helps and the numbers start dropping so we can get back to playing shows and fucking doing shit. That's what we do. That's what I'm fucking doing, dude. One thing. I I know enough people that have gotten it and everything is just fucking fine. So I'm just kind of like, you know, fuck it, whatever. Well, they you say know. it's everybody says it's tough, but everybody's gone through it pretty much, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like I mean, my I'm mom, not I'm not talking about the fucking COVID. I'm talking about fucking the vaccine, you know. Yeah, that's what I mean. The the, the vaccine. I mean, it's just to be clear to everybody out there because there's a lot of people like, oh, fucking Fred down the street had it. He's fine, you know. My grandpa had it, and my grandpa's fucking 80 fucking something years old. He's got diabetes, heart problems. He should be a sign of everything that's fucking, that that should have killed him. But he didn't even know he had it because he's got dementia. <laughs> he just fucking, you can't even tell he had it. Except he's testing positive every fucking time they test him. Because he lives in a fucking uh, uh, nursing home. So, fucking... It, like those things are like hot boxes for them, but um, but yeah, it's just I've had this conversation with almost everybody I've had on the show too, and I think a lot of good is going to come from this though. A yeah, lot, a lot of good is going to come from this because one thing that's fucking going to happen is like first off, it's been a long time since anybody's we uh, since we've had a fucking pandemic, so they're going to learn a lot and hopefully fucking stay on their toes about the shit second off 
I think that this fucking country and this world in general, most of the, most of the world in general, have really gotten really dependent on fucking interacting through their fucking phones. And I think it's one of those things where you don't know what you got until it's gone. I think people genuinely miss being around people. I think so when things get back out to normal and people can start seeing each other again, I think it's going to shift that whole fucking political issue in this country. I think people are going to fucking get over it more when they can hang out and do shit together. And I think live music, which was really suffering, the fucking poor fucking live music venues that actually survived this shit, I think are going to be fucking rewarded generously when this fucking ends because I think they're going to be doing really well because I think fucking live music is going to be fucking popping again because I'll tell you right now, man, the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to go see so many fucking shows, man. I'm going to try to see a show like every month. Yeah, yeah. Us too, man, that's straight up. It's going to be an exhausting time because there's a lot of fucking makeup time. Yeah, man. And I think I'm just going to make a general attempt to just try to be like you said, we're saying be in the fucking moment more, you know, not worry about tomorrow as much and worry about like today more, you know? Yep. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be afraid of opportunities, man. I'm not going to, you know, bury myself in on like this is what it has to be you know i mean again not be methodical and you know smart about the decisions but if something fucking presents itself i, I you know it's not going to be such a hesitation to be afraid to take you know maybe a risk or something you know yeah uh, you know you know one thing i want to try to do and this might happen it might not it's one of those things I've been telling myself if the right situation presents itself. I mean, I might try DMT sometime. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I'm not in on that one. You know, I've, I've, I know a lot of people that do it. And I'm just kind of like, you know, I can take my little dose of mushrooms and get to the same place a little bit slower, a little bit more my speed. Yeah. DMT is kind of like basically a fucking you know, trip across the universe in fucking five seconds. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's done, it seems to have done a lot of good for people, though, and I think somebody like me, somebody with a lot of ego, and somebody with a lot of fucking anger issues and shit like that might be able to benefit from it a little more, you know? Yeah, it's all individual. I mean, because like everybody that I You're know, probably You probably don't feel that way. I mean, I don't think, you don't have a lot of ego. You're pretty positive for the most part. Hey, Paige, we let Brody out, please? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, you don't have a lot of the – I mean, you're you, – like, people like you are who I look to to center me in my life. People like you and Honeycut, you know, because you guys have you, – you guys have got – I don't know. You guys are just more centered than me. You know, I don't feel centered very often, you know, and – We've had a few more years to fucking stumble and fall, too, you know? Yeah, but I don't know. I, I feel like, I don't know. You know, the best thing that ever happened to me, dude, was quitting drinking. Yeah, well, I'd quit drinking, dude. I'll still prick, you know? But, yeah, but the thing is, too, it's like, you know, especially, like, with me and weed, weed is one of those things that's never, ever affected me negatively in any way. I'm one of those people that I don't, freak out on weed i don't stress out on weed i do get too high sometimes yeah. you know and the, the, like oh shit i wasn't planning on coming here but you know i mean but it's it's very manageable and i usually can distract myself easily but you know but i'm also one of those people that i can constantly smoke weed and it doesn't affect me in a negative way you know what i mean it's yeah kind of more it centers me if i can actually kind of like helps me get shit done it slows me down yeah so we don't need that man it slows me down to a fucking normal pace is what it does <laughs> you know that's why i do good in the weed industry because the weed industry you know yeah. is, it's fucking asses and elbows and that 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 part of the day i'm fucking sober dude and i'm a fucking even in my old age i'm kind of a lunatic you know um when it comes to my stamina man i fucking can hang you know, um, so I kind of sometimes I need that weed to fucking slow me down, dude. Or I'd probably just run myself into the ground and value. <laughs> yeah, I got you. 
I'd never get anything fucking done. Well, shit, man. I think we had a pretty good interview. It's pretty long, too. Thinking about maybe having you on dog water a little bit more. Actually, I was thinking about maybe doing some kind of fucking month monthly, like, pappy sesh or something. Yeah, dude, I'm fucking totally down. I mean, we got the Zoom, you know, and now, now we know how, how you uh, approach it so it won't be so, you know... Um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to. I'll learn how to do it myself, so I don't have to always ask TJ to help me with these things. <laughs> yeah, you can get it on your phone too, man. So uh, I like it. I like it on the um, the iPad because it's it's. I just like it a little bit, you know, bigger. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, all stuff. right, man. Let's. I think we'll wrap this up, though. I think. Uh, um. We'll send the folks out. With where's my notebook? There it is. Oh uh, yeah, we'll send those these folks out with some stoned evergreen travelers tragic love song. And that's how we'll finish this show here. Kick ass is one of my favorites. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Ruckus in the Records proudly brings to you the Dogwater Radio Show, starring Dogbite Harris. Also featuring Jody Matter as the lovable but perverse Blackwater Derby.